Um, first of all, thank you for the invitation. I'm glad to be here, along with such interesting um, you know, contributions. Um, first of all, uh, I want to make sure you know where I work. Uh, I work in MAGBA, in the Museum of Contemporary Art in Barcelona. Uh, MAGBA opened in 1995 to give sight to the public contemporary art collections of institutions such as, as the Barcelona City Council, the Generalitat de Catalunya, that is the autonomic government, and also the funds of the MAGBA Foundation, which is the main featured collection uh, in our exhibitions. And, and in relation to a national and and an international scale context. We are a medium scale museum. We have uh, we deal with about 10 million euros budget per year, and we have about 700,000 visitors per year as well. And uh, and what I will introduce today is one of the digital projects I deal with. Uh, this is Radio Web Magma, uh, the website. Radio Web Magma is a telephonic project with the shape of a website under a subdomain of uh, MAGMA's main, main website and it runs uh, since 2006 and explores the possibilities of the internet and video as a spaces of synthesis and exhibition. The programs are organized by different series depending on, the, on their scope and the kind of content and they are 100 on production and they are available on demand for free download and public podcast syndication. Well, this is more or less the text you will find in the About Us in the website. Nothing but this, a description. Um, my initial presentation for this seminar was a very des descriptive one. This, was, uh, this is what I used to do, explain the project, the structure, the programming. But two days ago, I have changed my mind. I turned everything around. And uh, what I would like to do today is to tell you the story in the hope that it will be inspiring for you. The story of the project, as you can see or listen, diving endless hours in our non-responsive website of ours. Um, the Your Web Mark is a project that works thanks to the enthusiasm with my colleague Anna Ramos, uh, playing the whole orchestra, including me, which I'm supposed to technically her boss, but she pulls the project uh, the edition. And if I can take credit for the seminal idea, the startup, and the institutional backup and for the project, she's responsible for the contents and the booming of the today rich, richness of the project. So I feel privileged to work with her, and I would like to do this uh, presentation to her. The Web Magma started, let's say, uh, as a crazy idea. Uh, it started with, with a what if question and with a high dose of intuition more than on a specific goal. Uh, so let me talk a little bit about this crazy idea, the what if. We were, we were back in 2006. Uh, Manuel Borja Villel, the nowadays director of the Reina Sofia in Madrid, uh, was the director of MAGBA. He, he was in the museum since 1998, and all the staff, his staff, we were used to work in a very specific content context of public service, consciousness, and experimentation with formats. This was, in fact, my personal mantra, publish, publish, publish. In that time, I was the so-called webmaster, webmistress, I must say, uh, and my boss's demand was, Sonia, you should think new formats to release knowledge, imagine formats to improve budgets, cheap production, easy distribution, fast dissemination, direct transformation of the budget into public content. And this was my mindset at that time, and in fact, it still is, find new ways of releasing content, content to the public sphere. And in this general context, my, my question was, what tools does the internet offer that could allow us to experiment with transmitting ideas and knowledge? Remember that we were back in 2006, so uh, in that moment, that was a, now this is obvious, but in that moment, we need, we need to think about. And, uh, and what would happen if we tried 
a different way of bringing our web visitors the content that the museum constantly produces. What happens when we introduce orality in a traditional visual display technology as a museum is? And these reflections were in the social context when radio was in crisis. Everybody spoke about the end of the radio with the internet, the end of the live broadcasting, the beginning of the play and demand idea. So again, um, I, I guess I, I made a kind of a match. What if we take advantage of this crisis? What if we introduce sound in a predominant visual beast as a museum is taking advantage of this idea of play and demand? Um, the radio format, an accessible, familiar, radiophonic format that would allow users to access this content whenever they feel like, on demand, something that is consumed in a different way. We consume, in a different way, we consume text and written, and written stuff. Something that implies a different scope on content. Something that needs to be conceived in a different format. How the oral format uh, the radio format impacts in the way you produce content. But then I was taking note on what some FM stations were already doing on their websites and some, some exclusively online radio stations, uh, like projects like the BPS1 or the YFMU and of course the Google Web project. And with this in mind, I got the OK of my bosses and the director, and I set up a little team with a sound technician and a creator uh, that worked like the interviewer to start with the experiment. We started without any extra budget resource, but the general amount for the website projects, that in that time was about 30,000 euros per year. This means a whole thing, development, content production, text, translations, um, images, whatever. And we set up a very simple website, uh, an ugly one, I should say, um, and begin experimenting with small radio capsules in, high, in a very high compressed MP3 format. We gave shape to the Sonia series, that it was a magazine, a magazine program consisting in interviews with us with artists and curators, share sound pieces and the sounds of people and activities at the museum. And, uh, and we released this program about two or three uh, times per week. And this page was pretty crazy and unsustainable for, for the team. Uh, I was alone myself with uh, the whole project, not only the radio, but the the, the main website and the, the other digital projects I, were, I was dealing with. Uh, but the statistics soon proved that there, that there was somebody at the other end. Uh, we had uh, a small uh, community of listeners. And what was for sure is that even in that moment, we just had one line of programs, the Sunia one. We were already thinking that Radio Web Magba was a potential broader path, platform. Um, in 2008, we had a little more budget, and Anna, Anna Ramos came on board. She's a former journalist and has a very strong background in sound and music. She rules the independent label Alpu uh, with the Cisneros. So with her, we started developing the idea of a broader platform. And uh, once we had seen the creative potential of the project, our aim was uh, to go beyond simply broadcasting and documenting the present continuous of, of the museum. And we began to develop other formats that were equally interesting, but not necessarily related to the day-to-day -day, uh, drawing in the museum. This was, in the beginning of the, this was the beginning of the second era of Radio Web Magba. Since then, we've released more than 400 podcasts produced in several languages, many of them in English. Uh, organized in five main lines of programs. Two of them are close related to the activity of the museum, and the others, and the other three, are more specific in, in topics focusing on exploration of sound, art, radiophonic, and experimental music. And in an organic, totally unpremediated way, we've been building up a network of collaborators. We're leaving uh, the radio project as a sort of multi-layered choral experience. There are, 
the continual flux of minds of people invited and involved with the activity of the museum, artists and creators, but also the staff who voluntarily collaborate recording voices, our colleagues in the museum. And, and of course, there's the complicity of the sound artists, musicians, music lovers, uh, in the production of uh, and the aesthetics uh, decisions on the final edit. All our collaborators have something in common. Most of them belong to the first generation of compulsive music lovers who were able to set up a studio in their bedrooms. We benefit from the technological revolution of the 90s, which entitled a gradual introduction of personal computers as necessary or decreased technology. And working with a medium at a time that make it possible to attain a, prof a professional finish, even with means that are little, more than those of a home studio, we work with artists, musicians and producers who are capable of overseeing the production of a program from the beginning to the end, from drawing up a proposal based on a commission and design in collaboration, to delivery an MP3 and the final documentation. So, Radio Web Magda has become a content generating platform that has transcended the limits of radio, while our basis or while our basic intention was initially to become a showcase for the museum activities, the production process of, of the radio, different areas of interest, has ended up generating a convergence of ideas and related information that has naturally gone to contaminate other spaces. This synergy has been expressed in many different ways, such as the programming of one of the performances and lectures or a, or, a, or a whole program of activities, and even an exhibition at the Magma Study Center on graphic score and annotation. And at the same time, the research that goes into creating each series generates biography, discography, and related materials that then become part of the documentary collection at the Magma Study Center, together with the actual program. And in the form of a comprehensive thematic pack with in-depth information about the subject. So, in time of social networking or, and participation, an art center remains in a privileged place. With today's method, methods, we can give voice and space to many stories that only get passing or mentioned in traditional communication media. Because of the same economic logic that it crushes us all, they have to give priority to the profitability and to the tendencies and impulses of the market. With scant resources, Radio Web Magba project built a multitude of voices and has an extraordinary an extraordinary potential. Radio equipment can be as small as a digital recorder, I mean a microphone and a computer, and yet as big as the infinity of experiences, histories, intuitions, theses, theories, and obsessions of those who join us in the laboratory. And to close, I will shut up, and I will let our closest collaborators speak by themselves. Last year, Anna had the brilliant idea of asking them two simple questions. What is radio art, and what do we do at Radio Web Magma? And I've selected some of the experts with the contributions of Ben Vida, Felix Kubin, Woody Paul, Kenneth Goldsmith, Chris Calder, and Rock Jimenez de Cisneros. And uh, it will last about 12 minutes. And uh, let's hear what they have to say.
upon the radio. It is one of the softest sounds I've ever heard. And it's soft, and it goes on and on. And sometimes there's an interruption. Sometimes. There's an interruption. With baseball on the radio, the images just form in your head. But what's going on at Radio Mac is different than that. Um, because it's not just sound, but it's sound and text. And it's this coupling of sound and text that creates a different proposition. I don't think of what's going on in a Radio MACPA as radio art as much as radio by artists. It's a place to demonstrate ideas and a place to uh, reveal process and research and study. And it's a way of opening up uh, a composer or an artist's studio. And by sharing what's going on in each individual's studio, a platform is created that um, anyone can access. And this is a way that an international community of like-minded composers and artists can communicate and trade information and inspire one, one another. Good morning. This is Felix Kubi. I thought I'd answer your questions just after waking up because then my brain is not working, so I'm not intellectual. What are we doing? How can you ask me such a philosophical question in the morning? Well, you didn't, but it's morning. What are we doing? We are surviving, aren't we? Yeah. What is radio art? That is a difficult question, but I think that radio art is something on its own, something that is not theater, because in the beginning radio play was nothing else than theater. People even had the costumes on when they were recording. And it's also not uh, just uh, literature or spoken word. In the 60s, there was a guy called Knilly, I think, a very polemic, well, intelligent guy, who uh, demanded the totales Schallspiel, the total, God, <laughs> noise spiel. <laughs> um, that should include everything. So every noise, Every, everything that creates sound uh, should become part of radio art. Um, not just the voice that was predominant in the 50s, but every sound. So every sound was a voice. So every noise is a voice, and that is radio art transmitted by waves through the ether, riding the ether. <laughs> this is uh, the Green Pass speaking, and I'm currently in Sao Paulo, in Brazil. Uh, I believe that uh, radio art is um, a bit like publishing books, and I'd like to quote one of my old friends, Flint Jameson, who, um, who who's very uh, fond of, uh, of publishing new books, and uh, printing books, and, 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 and all these things, and he said, something interesting. He said that uh, the, the painting 
first became really interesting uh, uh, when when photography came in because then it, it lost its uh, its ability to uh, or its uh, or its uh, what do you call it uh, responsibility somehow and and that uh, deliberated uh, the, the painting so to speak. Uh, I, I believe we could talk about book publishing now because I believe that book book publishing is uh, today also uh, a very interesting because now we have the internet so 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 the book is now also a media which is free it is it 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 it, it has lost its responsibility and I believe it is the ex exact same thing with radio art I think that uh, radio art is art uh, done with radio in a time where radio has lost its responsibility. So what is MacBet doing? MacBet is uh, spending a lot of uh, money, uh, of uh, Spanish people's money, but it also does public service. And the, the radio programs that's done uh, from MacBet is also a public service in a time where no public service agencies such as National Radio, National This and That, is uh, taking the responsibility to present new and innovative ideas uh, on subjects, both in music and art or in philosophy or whatever, or what have you. Um, but, but basically, nobody takes that re responsibility through what, we, could, what we, we used to call public service organizations in Europe. And therefore, I believe that that, that is basically what, what MACBA has Take no more. MACBA now does its uh, public service, but it's of course not a uh, national public service, it is a wider public service in that respect. What is radio art? Radio art is the idea of driving listeners away, making them turn off the radio. What are we doing? We are taking advantage of the idea that we don't have to please anyone. Radio offers so many freedoms, which so few take advantage of. Radio is a purely acousmatic medium, so radio art is art made for the years alone that isn't music or drama and takes as its palette any sound that can be heard of any origin. Its purpose is aesthetic, so it isn't educational or entertaining, but uses features that are unique to the radio environment, like the interview or the narrative voice, or the language and forms of audio drama, usually in unconventional combinations. Radio art presents an opportunity for non-linear communication, audio metaphor, and the manipulation of pure sensation. Audio forms that have no other home are in their natural element in the radio, which can be understood in part as a laboratory in which new associative and effective forms can be evolved. Radio art is its primary investigator. What are we doing? Creating a free university of the air, making our contribution to a universal library, building an archive of audio documentation that charts current thinking and innovative practice in ear-based, non-narrative aesthetic forms. I'm going to quote philosopher Graham Harmon in an Academy Black Boy podcast from last year, where he said that a knife can still be a knife, even if no one is using it. Even if I'm using it, it's something different from my use of it because I'm not using all aspects of it. It's being as a knife cannot be totally the same as the fact that I'm using it as a knife in this way, here and now. Which basically means that uh, we can never really exhaust all the qualities of, of the objects we interact with. And yet because we humans are pretty dumb, we tend to think precisely the opposite. We, we have very limited lists of qualities for every object we use, and that applies to radio too. Not just radio receivers, but radio as a, as a tradition and as a medium. And I think, sadly, we're too used uh, to this idea of, of radio as a narrow, a very narrow thing, uh, somewhere in between news broadcasting and music and sports and general entertainment. 
but it's it's actually very easy to break with those limits. You know, to use a very cliche and obvious analogy, if, if a urinal can become a fountain, then a radio station surely can be much, much more than commercial mainstream radio, which I guess it's kind of um, stating the obvious in, in this room because everybody probably knows that already. But I think that also applies to radio art, so-called radio art, whatever that is. Uh, I think the danger is, is to build very rigid limits for that, that object as well. If we do that, then, then, then we're screwed because this thing that, that should be about provocation and introspection and psychedelia and research and this kind of naive idea of freedom suddenly becomes very constrained and very boring. And I think that's that's an important lesson to, to take from Greg Harmon and, and, and the knife, you know. Thank you.